Another beautiful day dawns over St. Louis on the southern coast of Labrador. No time to sleep in on a day like this. There's work to be done. There are fish to be caught. There are fish to be put away. The morning light creeps over the harbor, dancing on the boats anchored there overnight. Some fish out of here. Some from Newfoundland and Quebec are on their way north in search of fish. Some are about to be loaded with salt and supplies for fishing rooms along the coast. Further south, there's scarcely a fish to be caught, a blank in the Labrador Straits and in western and northern Newfoundland. But from here north, well, it's been pretty good. Prices are down this year, but at least the fish are there. Black Tickle and Punchbowl have become new centers for the resurging Labrador fishery. Here, further south, a more traditional fishery continues. People still move out to their fishing rooms along the coast, and the old firm of Earls from Carboneer continues to supply these families with their needs. Food, salt, groceries, fuel, whatever they want is just a CB call away. Keith Hardy runs the plant for Earls. We've got three collector vessels and we run between here in Fox Harbor, Murray's Harbor, Spear Harbor, Petty Harbor, and then we're over on the other shore in Sandy Hook, Ship Harbor, French Harbor Boy and we touched in George's Cove. We supply fuel and salt and grocery provisions, and our vessel on the salmon run, our vessel gets to most of those places uh, once a day. And we also drop off a bit of mail and whatever else is going out by, few passengers. Well, today land and sea became passengers. That's why we got up so early in the morning. Ambrose Chubbs was the skipper of the Madonna. He's been on this run for many years, bringing salt and fuel and groceries to people along the coast. I went to my regular perch on the deck to see what I could see, and I wasn't disappointed. A school of jumpers skipped across our bow. There's always something new to see on the coast of Labrador. Ambrose wasn't worried about dolphins, though. Arctic ice? Well, that's a different matter. Well, we got, when we're traveling like this, like, we got to worry about it a lot. Yes, by the icebergs, like, hey, we... Well, this one now, this one here, we're on here now, it's pretty good. We got a radar on it, but when we're using the other boats with no radar, like, you know, in fog, foggy weather, you got to worry about them a lot. It's easy, easily to run into one, like, you know. This was a hard year for ice earlier, I believe. Really, really bad year, really bad year. Not with, uh, mostly with the bergs, like, eh? We never had too much problem with, uh, with what we call pan ice, like, you know. But with the bergs, yes, we, we, there's been a big, a big problem. And so we steamed on in the Lady Madonna, north along the coast, till we came to a place called Murray's Harbor. In the spring, many Labrador families leave their snug winter homes in the sheltered bays to move out to the coast for the fishery. There are no roads to these summer places. The sea is the only highway. When you're fishing, you don't have time to go back home. So the appearance of the supply boat is a welcome sight. Groceries, mail, salt, fuel. and some good-natured banter between old friends. Not bad. Where's Gilbert? He's getting that. Pretty good. Not too bad, dog. No. What's the matter with you? You want to speak oh. dog? Oh, good <laughs> You're right, right <laughs> camera, Joe. You're right, you're right, you're right we get one. <laughs> Here on the coast, there's a job for everyone when the fish are running. Men, women, children, the old and the young alike pitch in. Some people think that all a fisherman has to do is pull the fish aboard. Well, there's a lot more to it than that. In fact, if you're involved in the saltfish trade, catching the fish is perhaps the easiest part. From the boat to the stage, from the stage to the table, from the cutthroat to the header to the splitter to the wash tub, to the salter who carefully stows the fish away. In 
covers it with just the right amount of salt. There's a lot of work in producing salt fish. It builds up a hearty appetite for sure. As soon as Gordon Penny and his crew have put away the morning's catch, it's up to the house they go for a feed. Fresh salmon, a regular treat out here on the coast. People here in Murray's Harbor, as in other parts of the Labrador coast, must keep two homes. You'll find the pennies in Port of Simpson all winter. This is their summer residence. The men often move out early. The women and school children follow later. It's expensive these days, keeping up two homes. Still, it's a way of life few would change. And with the fishery bouncing back in recent years, people here are glad they stuck it through the lean years and kept up their fishing rooms and summer homes. When the salmon dinner settles, the pennies will steam out and haul the traps again. While down in the land wash, with the sun and the sea and the cool Atlantic breeze, another generation of Labradorians sail their boats and dream their dreams. But there's work to be done. The Lady Madonna hasn't made all the deliveries yet. There are other crews here in Murray's Harbor. Some need more salt, and that's the most important delivery of all here on this coast. For fish can't be sold fresh. It must be salted soon after it's caught. Crews have gone through quite a bit of salt this year. A good sign. Find another fish today, Miss Poole. Oh, yes, pretty good. Pretty good all along like that? Yes, not too bad. Both been very good. Looks like a lot of the women are working at the fishery these days. Oh, yeah. Everybody must around here work at the fishery. Working, you know, some of the women go in the boat, some more. Work some stage. I don't want a boat then because I uh, got near cook. Got a cook? No, find her near cook. See, we got the kind of stage and probably some days it's two o'clock before we get in the next. Yeah. But you'd like to be out in the boat? Oh, I love the boat, yeah. I love the boat. Nice fish among them, Mr. Poole. Yes, sir. A lovely fish. How much do you figure you've got now? We have it. Ten candles, I guess, Marnie. And you'll be going out again. We're going to be getting it finished. We've got to stay in the spit, to see. We could still have a bit fresh now. We've been gone again to haul our gillnets. So you get a lot more fish. And we get more fish. We make more money. I suppose if you're lucky in a way, though, at least, in, at least you can you can sell what you can make. Here. Oh, that's just the one, yeah. Not like black seagull. No, that's right. We're in no trouble to sell it. We got a very good merchant up there. He's employed with the gas and salt and whatnot. A bit of grove and bring it all to the wharf. We moved from wharf to wharf. The Miss Madonna had quite an assortment of deliveries to make: brooms, salt groceries of all descriptions. I almost expected Skipper Ambrose to pass out takeout orders of Chinese food. Finally, deliveries had all been made. It was time to head home. We steamed by the stages of Murray's Harbor. Pretty busy day on the boat today, Ambers. Yes, Dave's pretty busy. We've had a lot of dough so far this summer, look, you know. 
look for the fish down around this area and we've been quick busy from 8 o'clock in the morning until about 10 in the night, like you know, just about the past two weeks now. There's fishermen so, scattered everywhere all along the coast. All along those little places, yes, by all along. And we we supply them now from Ship Harbor back to St. Louis, like you know, touch it in most all those little places. Yeah. But this area from Morris Harbor now to uh, from Morris Harbor to Fox Harbor, we just about every day, some days two, three times a day. And I guess when there's a lot of fish around, they're even busier because you got to have salt as well as groceries. Well, yeah, that's that's the main thing is getting the salt down to them. Like you know, there's, we've been quite busy at that. Probably made, moved seven or eight thousand bags of salt in the past two weeks. Like you know, so we don't get no idle time either. Yeah. Now, when when the fish is scarce, we get the idle time too. Yeah. But if the fish is plenty, we we're like the fishermen. Like you know, we're on the go too. It's a pretty interesting life you got traveling the coast. Oh, I love it. Love it, Dave. Yes, I love it. Like, but this is my 13th summer now at this, like, you know, I fished for a while, so after I got married, fish wasn't that plenty, so I decided to try something else. This is what we went at, so I've been at it now 13 years, and I've enjoyed every minute. Just outside, we found Gordon Penny and his crew at their cod trap. Come there, one for 10 oh. Need a 10 kennel there, please, sir. We had a good day last Saturday. Yeah. We had three holes, we had 111 candles. Oh, wait. Yeah. That's a good day's pay. Yes, sir. How long does the trap fishery last here now? Well, there's a little less. Another three weeks at our side, sir. That's not much there. A good day on the water. A good day on the land wash for the people of Murray's Harbor one day last summer here on the coast of Labrador. This is Tom King, fisherman of Petty Harbor on the coast of Labrador. It's not far out to his cod traps. He's made this trip many hundreds of times, first as a shareman with other fishermen, now a skipper himself with his own boys, Garnet and Adrian, and Val. There's another son who works on the shrimp boats and a daughter at home. For half the year, the kings live in St. Louis, the other half out here fishing in Petty Harbor. There's more to it than fishing, though. There's a lot of work on the land, too. Dorothy King, Tom's wife, cooks for the crew, tends a small store, two gardens, a flock of hens, helps in the stage, and when she can, goes out and boat. This morning, Dorothy's got the hens working overtime, for there's a land and sea crew to take care of as well as her own crowd. Once three or four traps have been hauled, we'll all be ready for breakfast. This is trap number one. From the looks of it, not too much fish this morning. A bit further out is the second trap. There's an iceberg grounded nearby, something no fisherman likes to see. Many a cod trap has been lost to these islands of ice. A mountain of ice. A threatening sky. And so far, not much sign of fish. But it's early yet. There's still time to fill the boat.
Tom and his boys continue to dry up the twine. Soon, they could tell there was a bit of fish in the trap. That's a good sign when you got enough to dip, anyway. Yeah. We'll move up the next town, Adrian. Our police couldn't do nothing with us. Had to put our families off the land. Yeah. All the year, couldn't get them to the land. Ice doesn't seem to make any difference to the fish, does it? No, I suppose not. Although we never got no fish till the 14th of July. Yeah. We got neither one till the 14th. We set out a gill in May, and the 14th of July was the first fish we got out of it. Alright. So that's a long time, isn't it? Yeah. What do you figure you got there now this morning? There. Now, if you want something pounds, probably we got about a thousand pounds. Yeah. The kings have five traps in the water. It gives them a much better oh, chance to pick up a load of fish. They'll haul another before going back home yeah, for breakfast. People have fished out of Petty Harbor for a long time. The Toms family calls this the heritage site, fishermen's homes that are more than 100 years old. Once there were 20 crews from Carboneer fishing out of here. Now there's just one, and three from St. Louis, or Fox Harbor as it was once called. Here's Dorothy's shop. And here's her garden. I've been here ever since I was nine years old, and that used to it now. I wouldn't want to live back server all summer long. I, I find it bad if I couldn't get out in boats scatter time. So you get out with the men quite a bit here now in the summertime, do you? I get out a few times, yes. Don't get out early in the morning, because they uh, likes to have their meals cooked and ready for them when they come in. And they got a good appetite by the time they come back. Oh, yes. He wants everything cooked already for him then. Sometimes he wants in the plates before he gets in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, by now we're ready to eat eggs, hens and all. This is the third trap hall before breakfast. And it's looking good. This is what pulls people to the coast of Labrador each summer. So that's how you do it, again, a bit in every track. Yeah. Every track. yeah, we haven't come out yet, I don't think. We might have probably, since I have three cars, I have to come out and get one load out of one and go in. Yeah. We usually have five every morning. Yeah. Uh, not, not so in a year. Last year we used a half five once every morning. We used to haul 15 times a day. 15 traps a day. Now we used to haul. Oh, a lot of work. Yeah, but it pays off in the end. It's only a short time, you know. Yeah, they got a lot, a lot of help with the boys. Wonderful help, Good to yeah. have a good crew like that. Yeah. It's a good crew, right? We haven't got to tell anyone what to do. It's one of them. Here we go. And now it's time to steam back home, hungry but contented. Three traps have been hauled, several kentles of fish taken aboard. The day is off to a good start. On the way back, I marveled at the fact that these fellows often make 15 hauls a day in their five traps. No one can say that the kings don't work for their money. We at Land and Sea had a bit of competition there at Petty Harbor. Dorothy was making a show too videotaping the boys as they came home. They call this part of Petty Harbor King's Point, now that the King family has established there. They bring home a lot of fish, keeping up a tradition that goes back nearly 200 years. And here's another tradition, smoking salmon. The Kings did well with salmon this year too, selling most of it fresh, of course, but there's nothing wrong with a meal of smoked salmon every now and then. Many families along the coast keep smokehouses. Yeah. 
Yeah. We're all making fire. Yeah. Winters may be long and hard out here on the coast of Labrador, but there's no need for anyone to starve in summertime. There's fresh cod, baked apples, fresh salmon, and smoked salmon. I was sorry we weren't staying long enough to try it. They say that not any kind of smoke will do. Some people insist that hardwood must be burned in the smokehouse. Well, it's not too easy to get oak and hickory chips here on the coast of Labrador. But there are blackberry bushes everywhere, and this is what they usually burn in the smokehouses. Is it blackberry bushes? Blackberry bushes, yeah. How much do you put in now? Do you fill it right up or? Well, no, not really. The money gets going, probably you put in two or three junks of wood after, and then you keep it going probably in two or three days if you like. You know. But the blackberry bush is what gives it the flavor. Yeah, good, yeah. yeah that's the flavor, is that fine? The blackberry bushes. How long do you keep it in there now? Oh, a couple of days, probably. It's all recording now. If the smoke stays on them, you'll keep them in a couple of days. And if the spark goes out off and on, you well, probably might want in two or three days, three, four days probably. It's a good life the kings have here in Petty Harbour on the coast of Labrador. The family is together, the work is hard but healthy. And now that overfishing on the offshore grounds has been curbed, there's a dollar to be made here on the inshore grounds. And while there is, the kings will keep coming back. It's a way of life they cherish. They like the fish. They don't like it too well when there's not much fish. They get sort of disgusted with it. <laughs> so they're working now from six in the morning till eight and nine at night, I suppose? Some nights later than that. Usually 6.30 or seven in the morning. But now you get uh, 700 candles of fish some years, I believe, or maybe more, I don't know. Right, we got a couple of years, we got over that. Some people might think now it's a lonely life out here, but how do you find it when you come out? Not at all lonely, not one minute. <laughs> I don't find it lonely at all. I keep pretty busy. <laughs> well, Val, you've been fishing now with your father for, well, I guess as long as you can remember, can you? Yep. I don't know, enough to go out and bowl, I was out and bowl with him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, many times I miss going out. Yeah, you, li you still like it? It was pretty good once you get in the fish and everything. And sometimes you're out your home dragging for nothing and just kind of get down at it, eh? But then when the fish comes in, you feel okay? Oh, yeah. So yeah. You're looking at a bit of money what you're making then. It was good. Yeah. So you like it? Oh, it's good, yeah. And you always do pretty well, don't you? Yeah, we do very good every summer. That's the well we like to do now. But everyone's like that. Well, Garner, you're you're back at the fishery this year. You must like it, do you? Oh yeah, I like fishing. Yeah, because it's, it's a pretty good life, I call it. Fishing in summer and then in the winter in, in the woods, logs and then a bit of rabbit hunting and catching and ducking, seal. Oh, it's, it's fun trapping. Yeah. So um, you're you're you spend the all year round on the country or in the boat? Oh yeah, in the boat or in the winter I spend a lot of time on the boat too, birding. Out on the land or ducks and in the woods. We do all right here. We got a week to ourselves here and there's not that many here competing for the birds, you know. Everybody gets along good. It's like one big family almost, eh? I like the life here. Yeah. It's just a good life.